Hey guys, we're going to be talking about homosexual marriage today, and hopefully I can add some clarity. One of the biggest problems in discussions about marriage is that the term marriage can have different meanings in different contexts. And when people disagree about marriage, it seems they hardly ever realize that they're actually using different definitions for the term marriage than the person they're disagreeing with. And that only leads to confusion. And I think I've found a pretty good example of this. There's this popular televangelist guy, uh, he's a Christian named Pat Robertson. And I honestly don't know that much about him. I do know he says things that make Christians look a bit silly sometimes. Um, that's why it's really not a good idea to get your information about religion or business from the television. But uh, I digress. Uh, anyway, Pat Robertson argues that marriage is a sacred and holy union, that the government wants to allow homosexuals to marry, and that therefore the government is trying to redefine what is sacred and holy. Uh, now the argument on the surface looks good, but it has the fallacy of equivocation in it. And that sounds a bit complicated, but all that means is that in his two statements about marriage, or his two premises, um, while they seem to be referring to the same thing, they're actually using two different definitions of marriage. You know how the word gay can mean either happy or homosexual? Well, the same thing applies to marriage. It has different meanings in different contexts. That's not to say that one definition is wrong, that's just to say that if you, you change the context, then you're not talking about the same thing anymore. Now, if your argument uses the same word twice, but you don't realize that you're appealing to two diff different definitions of the same term, then you commit the fallacy of an equivocation. That's all that means. Um, so to highlight that fallacy, let's look at his same argument again, except this time let's make sure that they both use the same definition. Uh, he says marriage is a sacred and holy union. The government wants to allow homosexuals to have a sacred and holy union. Therefore, the government is trying to redefine what is sacred and holy. And when we word it like that, the problem becomes obvious. And the problem is that the government is not trying to give homosexuals sacred and holy unions. And even if they were, um, Christians wouldn't have to worry because there's nothing any government can do to make something become holy or to make it cease to be holy. What's sacred and holy is simply not up for a vote. Now while I agree that marriage is a sacred and holy thing, uh, that's not the only thing we as Americans mean when we use the term marriage. For example, when the government talks about marriage, they're referring to a social contract between two people that has certain legal perks. Um, for example, two atheists can get married. But uh, when we say two atheists got married, we're not saying they engaged in a sacred and holy union. I mean, they don't even care about or believe sacred and holy things exist. Rather, we're saying they engaged in a social contract with legal perks. And we happen to call that type of union marriage. Now, what makes conversations so difficult about social contracts with legal perks and sacred and holy unions is that they both share the same term, marriage. Uh, it's really hard to recognize the separation of church and state here because the church and the state are using the same terminology. But we should be able to recognize that marriage in the secular sense is different than marriage in the religious sense. And how marriage is understood in the religious sense is not a good reason to argue for how marriage should be understood in the secular sense unless you, unlike me, are opposed to separation of church and state. I think separation of church and state is actually a pretty good thing. Uh, I don't think the Ameri American government should uh, force or prohibit us from worshiping however we want. It's not freedom from religion, but freedom of religion, and that to me just seems like a good thing. Uh, but anyway, before I get too distracted there, there is a couple more issues that I want to talk about that I think hinder a healthy conversation about homosexual marriage. And one of those is the conversation about the link between morality and law. Questions about whether homosexual marriage should be legal often turn into questions about whether homosexual unions are moral. And I don't think that should be the way the conversation goes. But anyway, if you want to hear the reasons why I think that's the case, here's a link to where we can continue the conversation. And as always, test everything, hold on to the good.